Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this 10 part series on race and racism in the United States. The focus on race and racism in this country came to a head on Memorial Day, May 25th, 2020, when George Floyd was killed on the streets of Minneapolis, Minnesota by a law enforcement officer, actually now a former law enforcement officer, Derek Chauvin. Chauvin had his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. But additional video has shown that it was actually more than nine minutes that Mr. Floyd laid on the ground with his face on the pavement, hands behind his back in handcuffs, pleading for his life. And not only was Mr. Floyd pleading for his life, but bystanders were taking pictures of this lawless uh, rogue cop killing this man and they were also pleading for Mr. Floyd's life. And so because of the, the gruesome nature, because of the callous disregard that this former police officer had for this African-American man, citizens all across the United States in all 50 states and dozens of cities across the country, as well as citizens around the world, reacted in a way that had not happened even after a series of these kinds of extrajudicial killings by law enforcement officers of unarmed black men in this country. And so this was the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. And as these multiple demonstrations started in May of, of 2020, here we are now in the month of July. And almost every single day in still dozens of cities across the United States, these demonstrations continue. So the purpose of this 10 part series is to try to understand not just the nature of police brutality against African American people, not just the discrimination that African Americans face throughout the criminal justice system, not just how African-American people are denied home loans, and if they are given home loans, that the interest rates are much higher uh, as it relates to whites and other citizens in this country. But we want to explore the underlying reasons behind these, this phenomena in this country. And quite simply, I'll say at the outset, it's because of systemic structural racism I think we need to understand at the beginning too that what we call race today is actually a cultural construct. It is not something that biologically that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings with different blood in their body and uh, different organs in their bodies and different capacities to think and to uh, react and to speak and to talk and these kinds of things. But this social construct of race historically was brought about for the very purpose of defining a hierarchy of human beings. And those who came up with this construct of race naturally put themselves at the, the pinnacle of human life. And I'm talking about European people who defined themselves after coming to this country uh, for the first time in the 1790 census collectively as being white people. So we want to explore this phenomena. We want to understand through examples throughout the history of this country that race and racial superiority are ideas that came about not because of any kind of biological differences in the human family, but these kinds of superiority ideas came about as a justification for the exploitation of other people. That if, in fact, you want to take full advantage and you want to have people not be able to benefit from their own labor, if you want to feel superior to someone, 
what is done with, within this racial construct, what is done within this racial hierarchy, is that it provides, in their minds, in the minds of racists, it provides justification that we will take full advantage for over 400 years of the labor of people of African descent in the North American context because they are inferior to us as white people, that they have an inferior mental capacity, that they have inferior emotions, that they are not capable of creating the kinds of civilizations that we, uh, meaning those of European and Caucasian descent, that Europeans were capable and had demonstrated in their history of putting and in, bringing into existence. And so we'll start with a very simple and basic working definition for systemic and structural racism. Because acts of individual discrimination are not uh, what perpetuates systems of exploitation, that individuals can be racist themselves but in order for this to be generational, in order for these ideas, but more importantly, in order for the systems that are put in place to have a self-sustaining lifespan and to cross generations, it has to be put into the structure of the institutions that govern the nation. So a simple definition that we'll work with uh, about uh, systemic or structural racism is the belief that different races possess distinct characteristics, abilities, or qualities, especially so as to distinguish them as inferior or superior. And as a result of this particular belief, belief and these system of ideas, those ideas are now incorporated into every aspect of a given society, and as we talk about the United States, we're talking specifically about these United States. In this country, and we'll get into this even further, but in the United States, from the very earliest settlement of this country, the introduction of Europeans into the North American continent brought with it, it ideas that resulted in genocide against the indigenous, the Native American people who were by the millions, numbered in the millions from the East Coast to the West Coast uh, to the North, the most Northern portion of this continent and the most Southern portion of this continent, that these kinds of racist ideas resulted first in the genocide uh, and almost the complete elimination of indigenous people. And it also resulted in the enslavement of African people of African descent, of Africans and people of African descent for over 400 years in this part of the world. And so again, in order for this kind of institution to exist for the period of time that it existed, it could not just be based on the racist ideas of individuals, that the entire system of how America was governed, how this country uh, uh, got its wealth, how it accumulated its wealth, it had to be part of a systemic, a structural, embodiment of racist ideas and incorporation of these racist ideas into every element of American society. So join us uh, for part two as we explore further the history of structural racism in this country, as we give examples about how it has manifested itself and the history of racism here in the United States.